Dan, thanks for coming on, brother. We've got Dan Fleischman today, youngest founder of a publicly traded company. You have a personal brand, whether you like it or not. Your apparel companies, uh, energy drink companies. I mean, dude, you're a poker player. You're like everyone's dream what they want to be like when they grow up. It's a, <laughs> it's a super badass. Thanks for letting me spend the time. Absolutely. And um, you know, first topic I want to talk about with you is reputation. Yeah. So, uh, and I hope you take this the best way possible. Yeah. I had no effing clue what you actually did. I knew your name. Yeah. Um, Alex here filming said, oh, I heard him on Clubhouse. My best friend, I interviewed uh, Tim Crown, founder of Insight Enterprises, a billionaire before this. My buddy goes, cool. I go, Dan Fleischman. He goes, oh, that's huge. He's, he's got good contact. So that, that reputation, even without anyone knowing what the hell you do, in my case, sure. tell me about that. How does someone build a reputation like that? So you have a personal brand, whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. right? If you don't tell your story, then people make assumptions. You're the single mom, you have three kids, you're a real estate agent, you like to make custom cupcakes for events, and you teach people how to play chess. Yeah. Well, if you don't post anything on social media, we either know you as a single mom with your kids, we either know that you're a real estate agent, we either know you play chess, mm -hmm. we know you might do cupcakes, but we're not really sure if you just like to eat cupcakes or do you make up. If you don't tell your story, then people make up your story for you. Beautiful. I always create content about the things that I do or that I like. Yes. And so by doing that, I create my personal brand so people can pick and choose what they remember me for. Whether it's my charity, sports cards and Pokemon, mm -hmm. my masterminds and events, my energy drinks, my whatever. They know me for something, but that's because I'm telling them. And so people, when they go share my story, they say, youngest founder of a public company. Or they say, yes. that he has an academy. Or they say, oh, he throws really fun events. Oh, he does a lot for charity. Yes. I'm out there telling my story so that people don't make assumptions and guesses about me. So what do you say to someone who, like when I talk about people get on social media or yep. post personal branding stuff, they either are A, afraid of critics, number one, or then two, oh, I don't, I'm not like boastful, I'm not prideful like that. So you are going to have critics no matter what. Sure. Okay. Agreed. Oprah has haters. Zuckerberg has haters. Yes. Kardashians, half the people hate them. Yeah. Right? That goes across the board, whether you're a house-hunting basketball player, LeBron James is hated in a lot of cities, passionately. Yeah. Still one of the best of all time. Agreed. You know people hate Michael Jordan, like, passionately? Yes. You're gonna have haters no matter what. I don't care if you donate $1 million, a $1 billion, they'll always complain that you didn't donate more. When Jeff Bezos donated like $93 million, every news article said, we didn't donate 100 million. Yes. Do you know how many billionaires donated zero? And he donated 93 million and got worldwide press talking crap about him. 100%. You're always going to have haters. Yes. So once you realize that, well, maybe your mindset will change. Mm. And so for me, I'm explaining things that are real life without exaggerating. When people try to exaggerate or make a, a false life or a fake life or the perfect picture, or everything's perfectly edited, then they have this persona to live up to. I don't. Authenticity. If, if that fell over that glass fell over while we're talking, I will clean it up while we're on camera. Yeah. And beautiful. then if I did that and the drink spills on my head, I'll wipe it off and I'll clean that off too and we'll keep talking. Yes. Because to me, I'm not embarrassed by real life. I'm not embarrassed by real situations. Yeah. And so too often people are so worried about what people are thinking and what people are saying. That part's gonna happen anyway. All you can do is deal with the shattered glass, deal with the water, and deal with the things that you can actually control. That's amazing, bro. And I think that, you know, the one thing that really attracted me to you, you said people get to pick and choose their, their points on you, was the charity. You seem like a very well-rounded, whole, actual, again, authentic person when you came out. So many people, I think, drive, drive, drive to make more money, fill their bank account, fill their bank account, fill their bank account. When you talk to someone who's just in that mode to just drive and, and make money versus like yourself who give back uh, to homeless people or just so many different, <laughs> your, your charity work, I'm just such a fan of. So there's nothing wrong with being in the zone, sure. especially for certain periods of your life. There's certain times in your life where you have to be in the zone. It makes perfect sense, especially in your 20s and your early 30s. You've got to be all in to try to accumulate wealth so you can do all the other things. However, I promise you, if you go out and give out food to the homeless or you go out and donate time to a children's hospital or you go out and do something for a senior citizen facility, you will like money and love money for a different way in a different life. Yeah. Have I mean, you always been like that? Yeah, because I've watched it in real life. Tell me about that. 
So I've thrown charity events for so many years and I always incorporate charity events into my events or into my brands because it does cause an emotional trigger for people and I don't ever try to raise money for myself or my charity. Yeah. Meaning, I want you to copy my charity, replicate my charity, go do your own backpacks for the homeless, go donate your own food, do, donate your own toys. It's not about you, it's about the actual cost. Right. And by doing that, I think that has way more impact than the actual backpacks I give out, than the actual toys I give out, for or sure. Thanksgiving food meals that I give out. I've got people replicating me in cities all over the country. That's why I talk about it so much. Now, as an entrepreneur that's in the zone, just focus on money, money, money. Yeah. If you step out of that on a Saturday or Sunday and literally just go out and try to feed the homeless or go donate time to the shelter, etc., you will awaken. Yeah. And it's life changing. My biggest pivot in my life was when I went to India. Yeah. Because I was out there meeting with billionaires and I had to literally step over homeless people to get to their office. Hmm. Not a few homeless people, an entire street. Yeah. And when you drove there, there was an entire road that was almost a half a mile long and it was all homeless people living on the side of a road. What? An active road. I don't know how they sleep there. And so driving on that road, tens of thousands, not a few thousand, tens of thousands of people then coming in and pulling to the parking lot, physically walking over homeless people to meet with billionaires in a high rise and a Nobu sushi here. Crazy. It, it's burned into my mind yes. of how simple it is to cure this part. Yeah. Right? Yes. I can't cure cancer. I'm not going to cure AIDS. People are working on that. Can I get them food and water and shelter? Mm. Yeah, yes. It's beautiful. I mean, not anywhere to that extent, but first time I went to Thailand, maybe five years sure. ago, little kids grabbing at my leg and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, people actually live like this. Yeah. Like I've heard it, I've thought it, but I'm sheltered. We're sheltered. One, one quarter, so meaning one out of four humans in the world live like that. Yeah. You know how big a percentage that is? Incredible. One one out there's out three of us in this room, you know, almost, you add one The one DNA one. lottery is, if there's three or four people in the room, one of us will never have electricity or clean water. So what do you tell people to get that perspective? Because I'm on the same page as you as far as, I, 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 I like to pride myself on giving back, helping any way I can. I started a, um, Group at Arizona State University helps uh, a venture fund that takes no equity in companies and uh, allows uh, students to get mentored by you know someone like yourself or successful yeah. entrepreneurs. Like that perspective, I can't imagine life without that anymore. But for someone that doesn't have that today, what's the what's the first step for them? Go with your friend or significant other or cousin or brother or sister or dad or your social media friends. Pick a Sunday and literally just go. Yeah. Just go to a homeless shelter. Yeah. Go to a teen abuse shelter, go to a women's abuse shelter, go to a hospital, a children's hospital, senior citizen facility. Something that you maybe care about or maybe you don't care at all, but your sister does yeah. or your uncle does or your grandma does or your nephew does. Pick their cause. Go support their cause. Just literally go with them. I don't care if you donate a dollar or not. Yeah. Go experience it for a few hours and see what happens. Yeah, I love that. Are you big into meditation? I like it a lot. I don't do it enough. I yeah. used to teach it many years ago in my, really? my former life. Um, I think it's very important. Yes. Uh, it's very useful, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it just really helps center people, yes. especially people that are ADD and spazzed yeah. out in this crazy world. I think it's really important, I just don't do it enough personally. So about six months, I think you like this story, about six months ago I had my first panic attack I've ever had in my life. I didn't know what the hell was going on until I lost my mind. And uh, so over the last six months or so I've been on this journey, just meditating for the first time, spending more mindfulness time, time away from the computer at night, in the morning, things like that. But um, yeah, I've, I've found just extreme clarity and just being able to spend time and think about it. So you saying you used to teach it is just insanely intriguing to me. I, 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 uh, just because it's such a new raw subject to me, it's, it's yeah. phenomenal. That's, that's amazing, brother. I love that. Well, man, I, I appreciate you sharing everything from charity work to business to everything else you got going on in your life. Talk just a little bit about the, uh, the $100 million mastermind or anything else people can get involved with sure. your network because you're, you're a super connector among other things that I think is just so impressive. You know everyone. So. I meet so many people because I throw in all different types of events. Right. So I have elevator nights. I've thrown 38 of those completely free. Mm -hmm. So 300 to 1,000 entrepreneurs plus a bunch of investors, totally free for the last seven years. Those will always be free. Yeah. I mean, 100millionacademy.com, which is 100 bucks a month. That's got 300 hours of content on it. So we teach there a bunch of different entrepreneurs and business moguls are teaching there. And then we do monthly calls and weekly calls for people to interact with the instructors. Then I have a 10K mastermind, a 30K mastermind, that's what we're doing here. That's a real estate mastermind. Then I have a 100K mastermind, mm -hmm. which is the 100 million mastermind experience. So I have this, I don't wanna call it a funnel because for seven years of my life it was only free and I never even yes. thought about doing paid for masterminds. Sure. 
but now I've taken that free model, which is going to stay free, yeah. and been able to create different levels for entrepreneurs to be able to network with other yeah. entrepreneurs, investors, etc. And talk to, real quick, just for everybody, talk, talk to them about the impact of getting around someone, hey, like yourself or some of the other people in the room that we even just walked by in here. I'm sure you're talking about people doing tens, hundreds of millions of dollars around that. So the reason that masterminds are important, whether it's a paid one or it's yeah. just you and your friends or you and your local peers or entrepreneurs in your city can create yourselves. Being in a room full of eight people that all have a six figure or seven figure or eight figure or whatever type of business or single moms that all own a business or real estate entrepreneurs that have two or three homes, being around the people that are in your circle or things that you want to do, well, what do you talk about when you're in a room full of other business people? Yeah. Business, yeah. right? If you're in a room full of people that are just smoking weed and skateboarding, what are you gonna talk about? Smoking weed and skateboarding. Sure. Nothing wrong with that, sounds fun. However, that's not gonna change your life in a positive way as far as scaling, okay. right, for your, for your future. You go in a room full of eight real estate people, or eight single moms that also own businesses, or eight entrepreneurs that own franchises, yeah. what's gonna happen? You're gonna talk about hiring employees, scaling, investors, LLCs, lawyers. You're gonna talk about the things that matter to your business, help them change your life. So I'm a huge proponent of masterminds, yeah. so not just the big paid ones, but also doing it in your own city. I think it's critical. Like, yeah. I've learned more from the people around me because it saves so much time. Yeah, for right. Sure. If you've lived and breathed in a space and you know how to make phone cases, and I want to oh, start making phone cases, how much time would I save by asking you? You got it. It's the same reason why our parents said read books, read books, read books. Now we get to do it in real life and have a rich interaction, ex rich interactive experience that I can bounce ideas and have real time questions. Off exactly. Of. I couldn't agree more, brother. Well, Dan, thank you so much for spending the time, brother. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.